automatically begins to take place in you because nature is essentially positive and the moment the right time comes the right teacher who knows the right thing comes directly to you and he will give you the right meditation it the no use of choosing our own master the master should choose as when the right time comes due to sheer ignorance some people close their eyes and decide my master is moria my master is kuthumi my master is jwal kol like that people try to call the masters and uh, order them to be their masters his idea of master is only a servant because he believes that the master comes at his beck and call so those who appoint masters in such a way those who have such an ugly idea of the masters they have to wait and wait for a very long time and those who do not wait but do something good and useful to the world discharge their daily duties to the office to the domestic circle to the friends and neighbors and try to live a simple and detached living reducing the number of wants distinguishing between needs and wants automatically they grow in spiritual maturity they go into right type of detachment and it is the responsibility of a teacher to go to him and give him the right thing always this is the truth and whenever a disciple received the right type of meditation he received only through this process and not through books or through knowledge or not through secrecies or joining lodges or not through appointing masters so this is the truth of it let us practice the fundamental laws of meditation let us try to keep our thoughts pure and follow the fundamentals of the yogic path according to the bhagavad gita or the teachings of the lord in the gospels or the voice of the silence or the patanjali yoga sutras automatically the rest of the thing takes its own place nature means yes you can do it it is equally useful one truth is whatever good things that attracts automatically our mind includes the real keys of our personal meditation when nature is attracting you that means nature calls you to meditate upon it this is one of the truths of meditation of course the there is a little difference between what the scriptures and the masters say it is prescribed that we have to observe the movements of our respiration in the region of the heart and lungs and not the lower of course even if we do in the lower pole there will be a great activation of all the energies but sometimes it is not so safe as the other method for the single reason that there are three planes of existence in us matter force and mind these form the three lower principles in us and four more principles exist as higher principles in us tomorrow or before i leave i will speak a little more detailedly about these seven principles but for today let us take it for granted that there are mainly three planes of existence in us the matter which forms the physical tissues of our body the force that is moving the body which is called the vital force or the prana in the yogic science and there is the mind with all its layers and this region of our body is directly linked with mind and the lungs and heart directly linked with the force or the prana 
and the lower chakras they are linked with the matter aspect so when we begin to activate the mind there is an automatic mastery over the other two planes and if we activate the force there is automatically a mastery over the force and matter but if we begin to activate the matter then there may be a disobedience of the force to the consciousness of the higher planes so sometimes the senses and the mind may grow powerful whereas our mastery over them is not is not yet mature in such a case people develop powers of some perceptions but they are not masters to use them so the path of the scriptures and the path of the yogic science is to activate from above downwards that is starting from the brow center or throat center or the heart center then automatically the lower centers will be activated the process of meditating upon the base center and then the next higher center that is also there in the yoga path but that is not considered safe by the masters of wisdom and by the scientists of the raja yoga path and the authors of the scriptures for this reason it is safer to meditate upon the respiration in the region of the heart and lung than in the lower region yes yes construction of antakarana it is a technical subject which requires at least 1 hour to explain if possible i will try to explain during one of my subsequent lecture because if i try to answer within 3 minutes or 5 minutes it is only a formality and no use i will try to explain it before i leave yes the first thing to do is to find out a few more people who want the same thing which we want in the place where we are living and <clears throat> automatically they form into one group and they should select a place mm. to sit down and may uh, meditate daily and by meditation we not need not only mean closing our eyes and doing it more effective meditation can be rendered by trying to understand and discuss about any holy book and how we should apply it in our daily life <coughs> and trying to discuss the professional and daily social activity as to how to make this activity fit in the spiritual program this is one aspect and then having a minimum time of 15 minutes to sit down and conduct group meditation during which period we are expected to go into relaxation of the body muscles and nerves and then a withdrawal of the senses and mind into ourselves which is more effective when done in a group than individually and a narration of an incident of a holy person's life is more effective to create meditation than an intellectual approach and a way to understand this is one of the top secrets of meditation which we normally ignore that is if one person can wonderfully poetize and narrate the life incidents of a holy person who has lived a holy life it automatically leads into meditation no. 
and then sitting for 15 minutes in meditation, observing the respiration and enjoying when the mind disappears into ourselves. The whole thing takes place in 15 minutes and when we have more time we can enjoy it for a longer period. And the next thing is to try to regulate the timings of the incidents of the daily routine. That is, on the same hour and same minute, we should try to do the routine things without having the tension of a program-minded nature. We should take it as a play and a game and not allow tension to take place for our program. That is one of the most important aspects. For example, when we fail, we should not mind it at all. Again, we should try to maintain it. This is what helps us tremendously. If we begin to notice our failures and think of it seriously, it eats away all the good effect of our meditation. So this is another aspect. So as many incidents as possible in our daily life, let them be of the profession or our social activity our domestic duties. Let them be adjusted into the proper timing. This is what is called constructing the polygon of the daily routine. For example, you have, if you have three incidents which you can keep up the timings, there is one figure of the day, you add a fourth incident, for example, starting for the office, you will have another figure. You go on adding more number of events of the day for which you can maintain the hour and the minute. If you cannot do it, don't mind. Do it next day. This is how we have to proceed. And the next aspect is observe your behavior with food, drink, sleep, rest, work and sex. And grow meaningful in these aspects. For example, enjoy taste of food and drink, but let it be done only to help the body. So let us grow more and more aware of these aspects. Okay. Automatically, we will grow meaningful in our eating, drinking, sleeping, etc. This is the next aspect. And try to observe what good thing attracts your mind and heart most. What color or what color combination attracts you most? What figure or picture attracts you most? Attracting means in a noble way, giving you a composure to compose yourself and make your meditating room composed of such pieces of art or music or painting and also the perfume and also the tastes of your food. You will understand that there is a correlation to all these things. This is another aspect. This is enough. The rest of the thing, automatically, there is the Lord Consciousness in us which shows us the way. And when we are really sincere of following the path, immediately there is the fellow who shows you the path. And this is a promise by nature. And the rest of the thing remains with the Master. When our purpose is done, we are already on the path of success. See. And the test of your success is that you begin to enjoy life. And life becomes more and more sweet without any reason. And you will find time enjoyable without any environment or without any reason. Your magnetism increases and your presence will be felt happy and sweet by others. This is a sure test of the progress in the right path. This is what we require in short. Whatever is quite comfortable to you and conducive to meditating mood, you can select that posture. For, for some people, it is, it is comfortable like this. For some people, they sit like this. 
let the body choose its own convenient path. But it is necessary that we should sit down and sit straight without a tension of muscles and nerves. The rest you can choose your own uh, convenient posture. Yes, that means it is your path. At every step nature teaches us we, have, we should know it. But one thing we should be careful. We should not prescribe it hard and fast to everyone. Because there are constitutions which differ from each other and about diet or the details of postures and other things, we should be able to prescribe for them according to them, not according to us. For example, if we have shoes that are comfortable to our feet, we should not ask others to wear our shoes. And we should choose their shoes for them. That's enough. Yes. Experience and the scriptures prescribe that sound is absolutely necessary to go into meditation. All the Indian scriptures prescribe utter Om vocally and listen to your own voice. You will go into meditation. That is most important. Body movement, body movement is not uh, prescribed in the scriptures except when we begin to produce movement according to music and dance. When we follow the discipline of holy music and holy dance of a devotional type, then they are highly useful in meditation except that other type of movements are not allowed. There are various schools each prescribing its own way of uttering Om. But the one school which is the oldest, which runs from the time of the Vedic age till today, which is known through Bhagavad Gita and the Patanjali and the Upanishad, it prescribes utter Om directly, not making any changes. For example, we are expected to do it like this. And listen to it while doing. This is how the scriptures prescribe. The sentence is like this. Om it cheta dakshara mudgitha mupas cheta. That is, utter Om naturally, vocally, with a uniform intonation, in a prolonged way, and listen to your own utterance. Then there is the opening of the door of consciousness, and you will automatically walk on the path. This is what is prescribed. Yes, all the prescribe, all the scriptures, they prescribe meditation to begin with Om. I to follow it and I believe in it. And I find that everyone falls in his line if he does like that. A minimum of three times Om should be uttered in the beginning. And sometimes if the disturbance of the intellect or mind is too much, in individual cases, the number of utterances of Om should be increased. Then automatically we will have mastery over intelligence. Otherwise, intelligence will be the master and it goes on suggesting things, not allowing the meditation to fall in line. So, in individual cases, we have to increase the number of utterances. Generally, the middle note is prescribed for all. That is the fourth of the seven musical notes. Yeah. That is what is called one's own normal voice. There are generally three intonations. Your normal in voice, your low voice, and your high voice. And 
for meditation purposes your normal voice should be the intonation of daily meditation for particular type of purifications and expansion of consciousness the higher intonation is necessary and for healing purposes the lower one which is lower than the normal is necessary this is how experience goes and how the scriptures prescribe once again the lower tone helps in healing your normal tone tone helps your meditation daily and your higher tone helps in purification of the finer vehicles and the expansion of consciousness for example i will utter in the three tones and show you now i utter in the normal tone now i utter in the low tone utter in the high tone oh like that yes imaginary stages automatically change and pass away whereas true stages go on establishing themselves more and more daily another test is if your reasoning mind is convinced you take it as the real state if you have any doubt that it may be an imagination then immediately understand that it is not a true stage because the person who can test is in your common sense nature has given everyone that wonderful gauge and there is no better test than it anywhere in this world one thing is necessary we should be careful of self mystification and self illusion imagination or a wishful thinking of experience that is enough the rest of the thing our common sense is there to guide us properly we when we are thoroughly convinced that it is true there is no argument it is true until then you can safely wait and be an observer if you excuse me the one truth that is that has no exception is that is there is no one in the history of humanity till today who has achieved any powers through his personal effort or practice of course i may be wrong but if there is any one i am the i am ready to follow him as his disciple and nature is always wiser than the human fellows and it confers powers only when there is a use through us and if we are to be useful there will be automatically healing through us and wherever we go the health in the family increases and with whom soever you speak for a five a period of 5 minutes their vibrations begin to change for the better and there will be automatic changes and when you begin to do meditation for specific purposes automatically it is limited 
and sometimes we may have some imaginary healing powers and it is not true but when we meditate for the absolute desiring or wishing nothing automatically all the powers are with you and they begin to work upon everyone is bestowed by nature for some purpose and it is never achieved by individual effort and it can never 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 be achieved by any means and any methods let it be magic or black magic this is the one truth of nature yes that is that that can be done yes you can you can meditate for the welfare of the humanity you can meditate for the expulsion of the idea of war and establishing the idea of peace such things are welcome no no just be a passive observer don't get involved with them you can maintain a diary note the date and give a description of what you have heard and forget about it if there is any need of remembering anything on some other day you will get an instruction as a cross reference to one of them for example some days some sounds are necessary to meditate a word which includes those sounds will come to your mind for example one day a word jesus comes to your mind all through the day it will be again and again coming to your mind it need not be the name of god uh, sometimes it may be an ordinary word for example pencil it comes in your meditation and many thousands of times during the day you will get the word pencil 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 to your mind there will be such experiences that means those sounds are necessary for that day for you to meditate upon don't take a particular interest in such things but let it take its own place and be an observer automatically what is required takes place our duty is not to disturb them or tackle them that's all yes that is good sounds like temple bells or sometimes sounds like thunders all these things are quite probable we should not invite them but we should enjoy them when they are there this should be our attitude so thank you for today